So um, Joni van den Ede is a postdoctoral fellow at the Research Foundation Flanders and part-time assistant research professor at the Free University of Brussels. His research concerns the philosophy of technology, media theory, and media ecology, with an emphasis on phenomenological, cultural, existential, and political themes. He's the author of Amor Technologiae, Marshall McLuhan is philosopher of technology, and of Mens in Media, and Van Self. Um, and he's also the president of the board of directors of the Society for Phenomenology and Media. So, thanks, Yoni. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, I, I must immediately say I'm, I'm, I'm really not, not an expert in the copyright debate. Uh, it's just a small disclaimer on my part. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit philosophically, I think, uh, a little bit academically maybe. I always tend to do that. Uh, I'll apologize beforehand. Uh, but I hope it'll make sense. And I think I can pick up on uh, some of the things that Marta already touched upon in her great talk um, with, with my story. And I'd like to go back to one of the, what is, uh, at least to me, one of the most important figures in uh, media studies, uh, maybe even the, the, the instigator of the whole domain of media studies, and that's Marshall McLuhan, probably a figure that's uh, well known to most of you, or at least you, you heard of him. Um, and it's someone with whose, with whose work I've been, uh, well, uh, intensely engaged. Um, so McLuhan um, is this, uh, well, he's in first instance a professor of English, uh, English literature, and he sort of uh, wound up um, saying all kinds of things about media too. Uh, but then we're talking about the 1940s and 50s. That's when he started doing his work and he came to his prime, uh, you can say, in the 1960s, became even sort of a pop, a pop star, an academic pop star. One of the first academic pop stars um, was a lot on TV and uh, because of his, um, well, his, his sort of, he had this uh, charisma and, and uh, way of talking that was mesmerizing to a lot of people and also very confusing to a lot of people. Um, but anyhow, so you, you probably have heard of this phrase, the medium is the message, that, that comes from McLuhan. And it actually, uh, it's, it's about the simple idea that, that culture and our, our world and our society in general are shaped by the media that we use and by the technologies that we use. So technology uses, um, McLuhan uses technology and medium sort of as synonyms. So if I use these two uh, interchangeably, I'm, I'm pretty much following uh, McLuhan. So culture is shaped by our technologies. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's only shaped by those technologies. That's called technological determinism. There's a whole discussion about McLuhan being a technological determinist. I don't think he was all the way, but okay, you can make a case for that. But the idea is still interesting. So the medium is the message. So what a medium holds, the content of the medium, like say you're watching TV, the program that you're watching is maybe not that important. Other things are more important, like the, and McLuhan, you call that the form of the medium, which can be about the material form, like the, it's, a, it's a black box and with cables and uh, it, it's, uh, it works on the basis of a network, a cable network and distribution and all, all that stuff. Uh, but it's not only about that, it's, only, it's also about the effects of the medium. So TV works in a certain way and newspapers work in a certain way. And it's not necessarily about, you, about what you see or perceive in the medium, it's about what the medium does in a more general sense. And that notion of doing is, is very important. Media do something, they, they have an effect and they shape how we perceive the world and that world itself in ways that we often don't notice. Um, and so in, in working out this theory, um, McLuhan uh, along the way deployed this very central dichotomy or a distinction between two different things. And it's that distinction that I specifically want to talk about uh, with you today because I, I think it is uh, very pertinent to this discussion about copyright. And although McLuhan didn't really talk in terms of copyright, he didn't really 
use that term specifically, um, but that the, the ideas that he worked out um, can definitely be interesting even today, and even more today, as, as I'll hopefully make clear. So uh, this idea was that, so media shape culture, media shape our world, but they come from something. So they come, they, where do media originate? Well, McLuhan had a simple answer. They originate in us. We are the, the source of media. And he said media are extensions of the human being, of the human body, of human senses. Like, for instance, the wheel. So he had a very large and, and extensive notion of media, by the way. He, he regarded all sorts of things as media, like clothing, uh, weapons. And the wheel also is a medium because it's a human creation. More specifically, it's a human extension. It extends our ability to walk. So we can walk just using our naturally given uh, capacities. But if we uh, introduce the wheel and start using the wheel and automobiles and, and things like that, we extend that natural capacity and we expand it and enhance it. So it becomes stronger and we uh, get to do things more efficiently and quicker and more cheaply and etc. And so he saw a whole history of extensions like that. And also the invention of writing uh, for, for him is a medium. Writing is a medium. It's an extension of um, uh, oral communication. So before writing, you only have oral communication. You you'd communicate face to face, and if you then have writing, you can you can put it in another form. So it's an it's an enhancement of oral communication, and so you can trace back that whole history which he tried to do, um, and 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 there comes in that very important dichotomy that I uh, already mentioned, because he saw two big modes emerging throughout that history, and the modes I'll, I'll also I'll already uh, say. Um, how he eventually labeled them. He called them, on the one hand, tribal, and on the other hand, literate. It'll become clear what those terms mean. Uh, but something important happened, first of all, with the invention of writing. Uh, but, but at that moment, not really already on a, on a large scale. The really important moment happened uh, at the start of the Renaissance, so 15th century, with the introduction of the, the movable type printing press by Gutenberg. Uh, that, was, that was really a, a big watershed. So you already had writing, that already was something, but the printing press sort of uh, expanded that and, and strengthened that. Um, and so according to McLuhan, because media are extensions of our bodies, of our senses, um, the, the, the specific sense that gets extended is going to shape the, the kind of society we get. So he thought that if you have a society in which mainly the ear and touch and, and oral communication is extended, you're going to get a totally different society than a society in which the eyes or in which eyesight is extended. And those are, those are the two big modes. So on the one hand, the auditory tactile, so ear and touch, and on the other hand, the visual. And he saw a, a big distinction there. Um, and so what happens with the invention of the printing press, and of course it's not just about the invention, it's about that becoming mainstream and, and printed books becoming mainstream, and uh, gradually uh, everything, everything changes under the impulse of that. So what happens there, uh, a society that was mainly oriented towards the ear and, the or and oral communication gets to be a society that becomes mainly oriented from a visual perspective. And, and according to McLuhan, he's been criticized for that, of course, because it's, some people have said that his historical analysis was, was very unscientific. Um, well, there's a point there in, in um, scientific terms, uh, of course, but it's still the, the idea is still is still interesting. Um, so, 
what happens is that um, what what was first, you know, imagine yourself in the Middle Ages, the main form of com communication that most people were dealing with was oral communication. Uh, not even writing as such, but oral communication. And that's the tribal mode. And McLuhan takes that term from tribal, you know, tribal cultures. Uh, back in McLuhan's days, they, they call it primitive cultures, which is a word that we don't use anymore. Uh, but that's where it comes from. So imagine yourself a, a tribe sitting around the campfire. This is, a, this is a cliche image, of course, but that's how you can get a sense of the idea. Sitting around the fire, exchanging stories. Everything is direct. Everything is instantaneous. It's immediate. Um, there's, there's simultaneity. There's also a, a very intense involvement in each other's lives. You, there's, there's little distance, and that's the tribal mode. Um, and it, it converges with that idea of, or, or with the mode of speech and hearing. Hearing is direct, you know? You, you cannot close your ears. You can close your eyes and, and close yourself off of that mode, but you cannot close your ears. So it's instantaneous, simultaneous. And then, of course, that other mode, that other type of society emerges with, the, with modern times uh, that is visually oriented. And a totally different kind of mode becomes dominant. Where, uh, and also think about how the visual sense works and how books work. Um, the, 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 the whole idea of modern Western society based on uniformity and fragmentation. So the letters in, in a printed book, it's, it's all uh, very neatly delineated uh, components, you know? The letters are neatly placed next to, next to each other in a linear sequential pattern. Uh, and you cannot deviate from that because it doesn't work that way. Uh, individualism. You're, uh, you read a book alone. You still do unt until today. I mean, there are systems where, like with e-books, you can see other people's comments and stuff like that. But essentially, you still read a book alone. So the whole idea of individualism came to the fore. Also, visual perspective. You bend over a book. Uh, and so McLuhan saw all these ideas as one, um, one format, one mode. Uh, and um, relating to our discussion today, of course, the idea of, uh, of authorship and, and also to a certain extent of property came about uh, in, in that era. Because uh, like manuscripts, medieval manuscripts that were copied by monks, um, had a whole different status. Sometimes you didn't he even have other, other names on manuscripts. And people wrote notes next to each other and it all became part of the manuscript. So it was more of a collaborative uh, thing. Whereas the whole idea of individual authorship came about in that, uh, in that new era, the visual or the literate era in McLuhan's terms. How am I doing on time? Okay. Um, so, <coughs> The, the, this, is the, this is the main distinction. So on a more philosophical level, you could even say that uh, McLuhan is reaching back there to, to a very, very deep philosophical distinction even, um, where you have uh, the difference between, well, thinking in terms of substance, and now I'm becoming very uh, abstract here maybe, but thinking in terms of substance versus thinking in terms of relation. Uh, where on the one hand, thinking in terms of substance is, for instance, you, you have the Cartesian uh, view where subjects and objects are split up in a very clear way. I am a subject standing over and against a world of objects, and those are different entities. And you can, cir you can, you can circumvent them and easily say, okay, that's the subject, that's the object. The, the tribal mode relates to a whole different idea, and that's the idea of relation, where actually things aren't so much substances, entities, self-sufficient independent entities, but are at the deepest level networks of relations, are, are relational at base. Um, and you can see also in the history of philosophy uh, those, those different uh, views emerging with, with actually a re-emerging of relational views in the 20th century, Probably also, at least if you would have asked McLuhan, uh, under the impulse of technological developments. 
And that's where we arrive uh, in, in our current days. And McLuhan also talked about our current days. Because what he saw was a return of the tribal mode. After so many centuries of the modern age, of, of the visual age, he saw a return of the tribal mode. You could call that retribalization. Because of what he called electric technology. And he's in the first instance referring to things like telegraph, uh, electricity itself, by the way, and certainly also television. Now you'd say television is a visual medium, right? But McLuhan saw that differently. He, he, he thought that uh, uh, television was a tactile medium, which is strange. Uh, and, and I won't go into that, why, why he thought that. But it's like television, according to him, was a very intense medium that, that, attacks, that attacks your senses in a very, in, well, in a, in, a, in a tactile way. And so he saw, even with television, and of course, he, he saw the, the, the rise of the computer to a certain extent, but of course he died in 1980, so he didn't see the, the digital revolution. Uh, but with all those things, we get a retribalization, and this is one of the reasons why McLuhan has been rediscovered in, in the last decade or so. Because a lot of people see in McLuhan, hey, this guy was in the 1960s writing things that are very much applicable today. Because, um, you know, think about internet and exchange on the internet and uh, what we do generally on the internet, on social media. You can recognize this mode of tribality, you know, instantaneity, simultaneity, involved in each other's lives. Uh, there's this con continuous... It, like watching the other and, and being watched. So it's very much relevant. <coughs> now, uh, what, what McLuhan said, and that's also an important idea, the, the problem is not that this development happens, that we have this evolution, that things evolve. No, the problem is our attitude towards that. Because he saw sort of like epistemological lack, that's, that's a pretty abstract term, but the, the main idea is we're not uh, ready yet to deal with the new developments because we're thinking still in the old mode. So we're getting retribalized, but we're still stuck in the visual mode. So we still think in terms of, uh, you know, uh, individual entities and uh, fragmentation, and we can't get on yet with that new mode of relation and instantaneity. Um, and so we, we need to catch up, so to speak. Now there's also a danger here because this suggestion, uh, so it, it would seem to suggest that we need to discard the old view. And sometimes when you read McLuhan, that, that seems to be what he suggests. But it's not totally the case. Um, and of course here we arrive in the midst of like, like the debate that we have today on copyright. You know, and this is uh, well known, I think, but like the, the idea of ownership, of individual ownership that you can trace back to well-circumscribed party, substance, a person or a legal body. Or you say, no, it's a network, there's no individual ownership yet that, that, uh, uh, anymore, that notion is outdated. So you recognize those two big modes in that debate. Uh, either, you know, information is a costly good, that should be protected versus information should be free. It's everyone's. You, you recognize these, these two big modes. Now I said that McLuhan does not really suggest that we should discard the old view because there are also dangers in the tribal mode. He sometimes seems to say that the retribalization is good, but at the same time, he says a lot of times the tribal, like, Life in a tribal situation is not necessarily peaceful and serene. It's, it can be very violent and it can be very confusing. Uh, and of course, we re also this we recognize uh, today in our world, in our digital world. Um, and so th those two modes, so, so what, is the, what is the actual problem? It's not that those two modes that you have to choose between them actually well, you need both, and that's pretty much also McLuhan's, um, McLuhan's message there. Uh, or you need to get the right attitude towards both. Now, what is a real problem is that, um, 
And here I'm sort of lifting off from McLuhan and, and uh, adding, uh, adding, adding some of my own reflections a little bit. The real problem is when either of those two modes become ideology, when they become a, a cultural discourse, uh, that, as it happens with cultural discourses and ideology, is used to legitimate and to strengthen certain other things that we prefer to, to uh, shove under the carpet, that we want to hide. Uh, that's, fun that's the function of ideology. Um, and so in, in our case here, with regard to the, the debate today, so both discourses, both ideology can be used and are used with that purpose, with those purposes. Uh, and that's the problem. When those modes become ideology uh, and when they're used to do certain things, then we're, we're uh, getting to be in a dangerous situation. So the, the tribal mode becomes ideologized. Am I still doing okay on time? Wrap up, okay. <laughs> uh, so the tribal mode becomes, can become ideologized and then you get the whole network ideology, which is an ideology and I refer those who are interested to uh, a very beautiful documentary by Adam Curtis uh, called um, it's All Washed Over by Machines of Love and Grace. Yeah. Um, it's all about that idea, the network ideology. Um, like, you know, everything is a network, everything is relation. That can also be used to just do a very simple thing that's sort of a, a constant in human history, and that's uh, to concentrate power and to make an establishment. Um, the other mode, the same can happen to the other mode, and this you can recognize in sort of the, the classic view that we have on copyright, you know, like with the, uh, the new uh, directive on copyright. So the, o the old industry tries to protect uh, what it has and tries to hang on to what it has and, and is still clinging to that, that classic notion of copyright. And, and then you also slip into the, the ide ideological uh, realm. Now, why do I want to make that distinction between you know, the modes as such and them becoming ideology? Because I think it's important to make that distinction because the two modes are, you could say, a reality that we have to face and that we have to sort out because we're living in a digital world that it's not maybe completely digital yet. So we're, we're sort of tr trans well, transforming ourselves into something else, but we still have things from the old world. But this is sort of a reality, and we have to deal with that. The important thing is to, to not immediately or, or without criticism fall into ideology or criticism based on those two modes. Uh, ideology or discourse, I mean, based on those two modes. And so the real problem, what is the real problem, to put it very simplistically, is not those two modes or choosing between them. It's, it's mostly the idea of power concentration on the basis of either of those two views. Um, and maybe some of you have heard of, of, of uh, this guy, Jerome Lanier, has written this very interesting book uh, that is immediately uh, relevant to, to the, the theme today. It's called Who Owns the Future? And it's, it really much... Uh, dives into these these matters. Uh, I would recommend it as it's sort of a, uh, a thinking experiment also because uh, he analyzes power concentration as a central problem and then gives his own solution which is half science fiction and it's, it's, it has been criticized for being utopian uh, because yeah I probably don't need to go into that. We can maybe do that later uh, but Actually, the main, the main uh, topic or the main uh, message that I want to leave you with is, is you know, those, uh, actually those two distinctions, the two modes, but then also those two modes versus slipping into ideology. Uh, let that be my, my core message for now. Thank you.